my name is Megan Bradley, my student number is 108132 and today I'm going to be doing a vlog on the business presentations from last week and the students I'll be looking at as Lydia, Megan and Lottie. To start with, Lydia Cave, um, her business was Healing Hooves. Lydia had a good basic understanding of a definition that best describes her business, this being shown in her mission statement, which stated to support and improve mental well-being in people using horses. This is a very clear overall understanding of what the business aims to provide. She will achieve this by working with people in groups or individually with horses to, benef to help benefit their mental state and their well-being. Lydia did a very good market research into many different competitors, she, which made her have a good understanding and a good knowledge into different competitors within her section of industry, what the different competitors are providing, what she could provide, and what makes her business better than her other competitors. I found a reference that stated that the way in which horses help to improve the mental health within young children lifts their educational grades up in schools and also makes them happier and generally happier to be around horses. This was found in an article written by Harvey et al. 2020. Lydia had a clear and layout, a clear and understanding clear layout throughout the PowerPoint which made ev which made everybody clear to what was going on. Negatives for Lydia, however she did not go into detail on what each of her services is providing. By this I mean what is in the service, what will the children or the adults be doing in each session, how long will the sessions take and she didn't have any scientific evidence to back it up that stated that working with horses um, will significantly improve your mental health or working with animals in general will remove your will will help you significantly i found another article by wolves et al 2019 that looks at the relationship and the relations between humans and animals and how that can really benefit their mental health lydia didn't take into consideration as well the inflation cost at the moment in the uk and how expensive things are in terms of um, equine products. She stated in a cash flow forecast that she is estimating £60 for um, equine equipment, head collars, lunch lines, buckets, grooming equipment, tools, um, and everything like that. This is an underestimation, as um, she'd be very lucky if she got all of that for £60. Um, she needed to. She needs to reevaluate this, and she needs to, which will overall change her overall cash flow forecast. But overall, a really strong and descriptive understanding of her business. The second student I'll be looking at is Megan's Fuel Your Mule. The posit positives for Megan's is the name best describes it. It is. It says what it is. Fuel Your Mule. It's a supplementing company. And actually, Megan as well carried out really good market research in terms of her marketing map and actually her surveys her marketing strategy surveys that she sent out to people she got really good responses from that which made her see that there is a gap in the market for her business and her business could fill it and she could potentially become a really profit profitable business i found um, a reference by slater et al 2011 that talks about maximizing the performance through marketing and how you can get more customers more profit and really up your whole business's performance by a really good marketing strategy. However, negatives for Megan's business, she stated that there was only one business competitor that she looked into for her SWOT analysis. Um, I was really curious by this and I did my own research. I found that Feedmark Brands is also a supplement brand that um, will provide the customer with one supplement, which Megan Brands is doing. She just wants uh, one horse, one supplement that f fuels your horse for all things. Feedmark provide this. They also provide you to um, 
choose your supplements for your horses and it comes in a box and it all, they also do monthly subscriptions so you will always have supplements for your horses. It's a shame that Megan didn't look into this because this would have been a very good competitor for her, reference Feedmark the website. She would have really found um, parts of this website that could she could have used in her own business. One thing that Megan really needs to look out for is the fact that she's not buying in someone's brand, remarketing it, changing the labels and then selling it on. Because that is illegal, that is stated in consumers right law and the government website that one and um, however if she's buying different products in and um adding to them and relabeling them and then selling them out that is illegal she that she can do that she has the right to do that however if the person if you're making more profit from that the original owners of the supplement may find an issue but that's also referencing the law um, exchange website as well. Uh, Megan also stated that horses don't need much supplements over the winter. This is incorrect. William et al. 2012 states that horses need more supplements over the winter as their body temp as their general health, well-being and condition will drop due to the weather. They need supplements that provide that. And also 25% of horses need more energy, which is seen in supplements. Um, Megan also speaks about only following FEI rules. This could potentially limit her market as she um, could have more customers if she does non-FEI and FEI legal. A risk to Megan's business is that by having 20 grand inheritance, she's not having any bank loan. And if she needs to withdraw money from a bank loan, she may be turned away because she doesn't have any bank loan, credit loan history. So I would, this could be a risk for her business. Because if she needs, if she has having financial struggles, she may not be able to take a bank loan out. Lottie, um, Hedge Hughes Nutrition. Lottie's business has a strong name. It's a supplement brand. It's a calming brand. The name describes, best describes the business. She has a clear uh, business goal. She knows where her business is going. Um, she, what it provides is a diet and nutrition plans, supplements by her own chaff. Her own, she buys her own machinery for her chaps and she mixes calming supplements in with that to make an overall chaff calmer for the, for the customer so they don't forget to put their supplements in. Lottie's product is all um, environmentally friendly, so she's really thought about how can she, she can sustain her business. And actually, um, Mark et al. 2017 that I found stated that people are more likely to buy um, an environmentally friendly business than a non-environmentally business. So she could potentially also maximise her, her profit right there and her customer intel straight away. Lottie had a brilliant understanding of the uh, potential external factors that could limit her business. She did this for a pest analysis covering from climate change to Brexit to COVID. Blank et al. 2020 that I found stated the importance of a pest style analysis on a business and the way it can be used for marketing strategies, planning strategies and new products as well. So I believe I feel that Lottie has a really strong hold over her business. She knows where her business is going and, and by actually being environmentally friendly, she's always she's already taking that step into the future and actually looking at the pestle and working and thinking of how that can alter her business. However, Lottie's cash, uh, cash flow forecast was a little bit confusing because she forecasted that her car will cost her an upfront cost of £1,304.90p and a month monthly cost of £304.90p. However, if she had chosen to, because she's, an, if she had chosen to take that upfront car cost and spread it over longer years, she would have then been uh, potentially could have been. Uh, had a profit at the end but she didn't and in year one and year two her business isn't making a profit to me that questions will her business be profitable in the long run will it make a profit when will it make a profit could this potentially limit her business and actually smith et al 2000 and 
19 talks about financial management what why doing a cash flow forecast correctly and limiting everything and working within your means can potentially make your business profitable and just being generally over organized of your expenditure how your business can overall be organized and work well but overall i believe lottie has a really strong business I believe all three of them have a strong and good business plan. Thank you.